Hi everybody, today I'm coming to you with the message, all right? This is the equivalent of an NPR pledge drive on steroids, but I'm not code switching. I could talk I could talk to you in a soft voice. You know, you want the abrasive thing? Whatever you want. We just need you to donate to our nonprofit, all right? And it's a tax deductible donation. We're, we're trying to purchase land here, all right? You donate to our nonprofit, we send you the EIN number, all the stuff you need to give to the tax guy, okay? You could send us a check, you could send us Venmo, and then after that, we're gonna send you the EIN number, and then we're gonna come invite you to come look at this parcel of land that is down here in South Texas on the borderlands. We got tons of rare plants here, endangered plants, and we're never gonna be developing it. We're gonna put one building here, maybe get a nice bathroom, know a guy that does a good tile job, and we're gonna get, you know, maybe put a, like a little cafe in a, in a the spot too. We have a nice visitor center with a nice bathroom. You can come sit here, drink a cup of coffee, and we're gonna be building, uh, basically making it a research station. We're gonna be making it a research station and inviting people to come down here, study things like soil, study the ecosystem. All right, the soil here is fucking wild. I mean, it's like this silty, sandy, unlike any of the other desert environment you've ever been to, all right? turns into a mud when it's wet, it's powdery when it's dry, uh, you know. We're gonna be inviting all the donors, we're gonna be inviting students, we're gonna be inviting researchers from various institutions to come down here, study these these endangered ecosystems, como se dice nice, all right? All right, we got tons of rare cacti, tons of rare plants, we got the prostrate milkweed here, just listed as an endangered species. We got a lot of good stuff going on, all right? But we need to raise the money to purchase this and we got to do it by March. All right, 30 acre parcel right here. You can see this is black brush acacia uh, behind me. Common name acacia. It's no longer an acacia. It's Michelli rigidula. We got Asclepias prostrata. We got uh, tons of cool plants. We're going to go check them out. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you no more, but if you can donate, cool. If you know, you know some rich people who want to donate to a land conservancy. There's going to be an everybody parcel, all right? Everybody who's not a prick, all right? Everybody's invited to come down here and enjoy this land, you know, research it, study it. We're gonna have a little library in a visitor center, all right, next to the bathroom. Anyway, let's go check out some of the plants we got going on here. Future site of the Tomalip and Thorn Scrub Sanctuary and Research Station. See, you got a little bit of buffalo grass here, gotta remove that, but this soil, look, that's a living crust right there, that's all lichen, got tons of black brush, Pichelia rigidula, got tequilia, got euploca, Got all kinds of stuff coming up here, all right? This black brush is really, again, the, it's the cornerstone of the ecosystem. Yucca constrictor right here. And you got little chert nodules all over the ground. The soil is just amazing. There's a the, uh, Boer javier. You got leucophyllum, frutescens, that mimosa texana. Look at them fruits. Look at that, like spiny beans. Oh God, we're gonna have to grow more of this guy too. Part of this was root plowed at some point 20 years ago. This is all stuff that came back. We're gonna have to remove the buffalo grass, all right, and then restore a bunch of uh, what's here. Be planting more natives from local seed stock. The black brush is so amazing. This most exciting of all, Asclepias prostrata, all right, a listed endangered species, all right, the prostrate milkweed, all right, it looks like a banger when it flowers. It's these big, Big beautiful milkweed flowers on it, and there's like 20 plants here. Also got Erythrostem and caudatus, only known from northern Mexico and South Texas. That's a legume, that's a pea, really cool yellow flowers when it's going off. Seen quite a few Erythrostem down there in Chile as well. But you could see, you know, the buffalo grass starts to taper off, and you get these really cool plant communities, right? So we got all this stuff needs to be conserved, all this stuff needs to be protected not only protected, but actually grown. So we'll be collecting seed from local stock, growing a ton of it, probably selling uh, some of the seedlings we grow from, from you know, plants like erythrostemon, planting a ton back, because we just want to see these up. We just want to see these plants thrive. We want to see them get into landscapes, but most importantly, we want people to be able to learn about the stuff that grows here, all right? We're not gatekeeping this. That's the sad fact about Texas, that it's private property, is off limits. We actually want people to come out here and visit us. You come out here, you have a cup of coffee with us, you sit down, you right, you enjoy the nice bathroom with the tile job, okay? No a guy that does that and he, he's very affordable. All right, we're gonna have him doing the tile in his spot. 
And then you come look at some of these endangered plants out here in a type of ecosystem that doesn't exist anywhere else in the United States, only in South Texas, all right? Tons of cool cacti here as well. Look at the geology here, all right? This is all sandstone from the Jackson Formation. It's like sandy mud, all right? That's why you get that prostrata, that prostrate milkweed. It likes the sand, but you also get these cool 35 million year old, roughly 40, 35 to 40 million year old oyster shells on it. Some of them are quite large and you get the chert nodules over there nice too. Lots of uh, artifacts here as well, chippings, that kind of stuff. And uh, we're all gonna be keeping that here on the land. Again, this is going to be a research station. So that's why we, we wanna get this, we wanna preserve it. We want people to come here and study it. We would be honored to have you. Why don't you come down here? You just, you gotta, just say something nice about the bathroom we're gonna build here. Cause it's gonna, you know, you get a visitor center with the bookstore and a nice bathroom and you're set, you know, and it's a spot, a little cafe, it's a spot you wanna marinate, you know? Here's a nice oyster fossil, see that, look at that beast. Multiple layers on that shell. Calcium carbonate embedded in sandstone. Look at this, look, more of that, more Asclepius prostrata. See, it's got the undulate leaf margins, wavy leaf margins, so the whole surface of the leaf isn't exposed to the sun all at once, and it's just growing on the sand. There's another one right there. And there's, we counted 20 last time. So, again, we got two or three endangered species on this property. Serhania is here, Chihuahua balloon vine, tons of good stuff. Zapata bladder pod is here. It's not up right now, but there's a ton of good stuff. So there's Euploca confertifolia baraginaceae. This is kind of an odd one too. And it loves, all this stuff loves the limestone, a calcareous limestone, or in this case, calcareous sand. Look at that. There's more Asclepius prostrata right there and right there. Donate to us. Please donate. Help us build the visitor center with the nice bathroom. Beautiful Echinocereus fitchii. Just has to be allowed to thrive, and that means ripping out the buffalo grass. Aristolochia erecta. The Aristolochia that doesn't look like an Aristolochia until you see that weird ass Dutchman's pipe flower that comes out of it. But, uh, you know, really cool. Host plant for some really cool butterflies and a really bizarre flower that's pollinated by fungus gnats. Almost looks like a carnivorous plant, the flower does at least. Look at that, right there by the Achilles. Look, we got Ancestro cactus shirai. Cactus that forms a potato. See that? Tubercles, not ribs. So it doesn't have ribs that go up and down the spine. It's got actually little projections. Look like little nipples. Tubercles and then hooked spines. And this is a beast because, again, it forms a little potato, a little storage root deep in the ground. Can, so if the top dies, that little potato can generate, send out a new stem once it gets some moisture. You go nice baby horse crippler under there. Echinocactus texensis, or now Homolocephala texensis. Loisia macrostachys. See that verbenaceae. Got a bunch of good stuff here, but we got to get in here, remove this buffalo grass. And my concern is if we're not able to get it, if we're not able to purchase this parcel and save it, it's just going to end up going to someone who wants to develop it and turn it into a housing tract, which doesn't really make any sense because there's not much water left in this region. Anyway, it's a very thirsty region. People still want lawns here. Hopefully, we're trying to change that. We're trying to show people what can be done and what, how cool the native flora is. Look at that nice money shot of Leucophyllum, the Sinisa Leucophyllum frutescens. Look at it. You can plant those in the summer. As long as you water them, they just take off. They're fine. They, they grow quite fast, too. Instant hedge. Yeah, Hetrophe cathartica forms a big caudex down there. Big. It's not even a, it's not, look at it, it's breaking the soil up. It's so swollen because it just rained. Get those leaves. Explosive dehiscence on those fruits, too. I didn't see this last time I was here. That's cool. That's another rare one. This, we just sliced, we just sliced open one of them branches, one of them little leaves, excuse me, those leaves that had hectia, and you can see, look, it's got those clear, translucent, almost window cells. All the chloroplasts, all the chlorophyll are at the base, the underside of that leaf. And look at that thick covering of wax up top. You see that? You can tell those wax or trigums. Definitely looks like wax. So it's like an aloe almost. Again, drought adaptations. I'm here with a plant physiology professor, so it makes it really easy to explain this stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this thing. Mean as hell, but it's also got those adaptations against drought. Kind of mucilaginous. You can see right there at that uh, where we cut it. Look at that. Got hectia down here. Come out, come down here and, and check it out for yourself. You know, nice mammillaria hydri. There's a species of concern. A lot of them are getting taken out by pigs. They uproot them and then eat the roots. We got to plant a bunch of those. Bunch of mammillaries growing beneath the guaiacum. And Gustafolium, one of the 
one of the plants colloquially known as ironwoods, a member of the creosote family, Zygophilaceae. Also here we got Manfreda longiflora, okay? This is basically like good herbaceous agave. Herbaceous is the sister genus to uh, agave. So it dies back. It's got these little succulent leaves all speckled and what the shit. Got some nice dentation on there along the margins and then it just dies back to that root when it gets too hot. Growing in a colony of Hetrofa dioica. A little, it could be a desert tortoise burrow. Could be a rattlesnake in there too. Do you want to tell the desert tortoise that he can't have his home? Because this is going to be bought by a developer and turned into a housing tract for phrases. You don't want to tell him that, do you? A double header, a double header ancestral cactus, Shirai. It's growing in the shade of the black brush. You got a kind of cactus texensis, it's a large horse crippler. And over here, Cromaria ramosissima. I'm surprised there's not astrophytum here. There should be. It's sandy soil. You got Varilla texana back there, Isacoma coronapifolia right there, Escobaria emscoteriana, which can look like Mammillaria prolifera, which is a much smaller cactus. Escobaria gets those elongated stems. So help us preserve this stuff, all right? I'm almost, I'm, I'm excited that this needs more work, that this land needs more work. We got buffalo grass to clear out. There's more possibility to do good here. We're not just purchasing a virgin parcel. We're actually, God, look at that dog choyo. That's a bastard of a plant. All right, we're actually, we have an opportunity to, to restore, replant, clear buffalo grass and restore habitat and protect. There's three different endangered species of plant growing here. So anyway, please, you could help us, help us build the visitor center of your dreams, okay? Of our dreams. All right, library, bookstore, and a real nice bathroom. And most importantly, we're preserving land and, and, and restoring it as well. Getting rid of this damn buffalo grass, the Sancris ciliaris, okay? You can email us, you can email us at thornscrubsanctuary at gmail.com. Uh, if you make a donation, hit us up. We'll give you our EIN number uh, for the nonprofit. And, uh, and we'll get going. Then it's all tax-deductible donations. Or you got to talk to your tax guy. I don't know what the limit is on tax-deductible donations. But regardless, uh, you know, you, you do get, you, you get a kickback. You get a percentage shaved off and it goes to a good cause. Then you come visit us, you have a cup of coffee and use the bathroom nice. And learn a little, learn a little bit about the rare flora of South Texas, which again occurs nowhere else in the United States. A very distinct and unique plant community down here. So anyway... Uh, oh, you can also uh, mail us a check to email us, thornscriptsanctuary at gmail.com if you want the address. That's all I got. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be doing more of these NPR pledge drives on steroids probably at some point because we got to get this. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.